Hello, we're Old Shelly here, and it's time for another episode of Concealer Fest, and today I'm going to check out from Hourglass the Vanish Airbrush Concealer. Retails for $34, you get 0.2 ounces of product, currently getting 4.1 out of 5 stars with 837 reviews on Sephora's website, 22 shades available, of which I've got the... It's the lightest shade, but it's the second on the spectrum. The first one is a warm yellow undertone. This one is a pink undertone. The shade name is Creme for fair with pink undertones. It's described as a full coverage, weightless, waterproof concealer with micro spherical powders that blur and brighten for up to 16 hours of skin perfection. Natural finish, normal dry combo, oily skin. It has no sulfates, SLS, SLES, no paraffins, Parabens. Parabens. No phthalates, no mineral oil, less than 1% of synthetic fragrance. It's also vegan and cruelty free. It is crease refri. Wow, words are just not with me today. Crease resistant, light reflecting liquid concealer blends seamlessly into skin and diffuses the look of pores and fine lines. So this sounds like they want you to use it everywhere because I don't have a ton of visible pores under my eyeballs. Highly pigmented formula, even skin tone to conceal the appearance of dark circles, blemishes, and other imperfections for a smooth, natural, and airbrushed finish. Let's take a look at this shade Creme swatched against a few others in my collection. Alrighty, let's swatch some concealers. First up is today's concealer, the Hourglass Vanish in shade Creme. Second, I've got from Charlotte Tilbury, the Magic Away Concealer in shade Fair 2. Third up is from Cover FX. It is the Power Play Concealer in shade 1, Light Neutral. Fourth is from NARS. It is the Radiant Creamy Concealer in Vanilla. And last up, I've got the Tarte Shape Tape in shade Fair. The packaging on this is really pretty. Do you see how it's like more thin at the bottom? and then thicker as you get toward the top. I really enjoy this little sort of frosted glass. The shape of it is just very nice. All of my concealer brushes are a hot mess right now, so we're gonna do fingertip and sponge, and we'll try it that way. I like the shade. I haven't been going for too much brightening under my eyes. I've been kind of going for just a bit closer to a skin tone match. So this will be a little brightening on me, but not extremely. I find that the less brightening seems to do less accentuation of the crepey texture under my eyes, which is good. With a sponge, I don't think we're quite full coverage, but we are getting some coverage for sure uh, in terms of the lessening of the dark circles. I don't think we're full coverage right off the bat. I can still kind of see the purple trough there. Let's try fingertip, because I literally have no brushes that are even clean enough to pretend they're clean. Yeah, I think you get better coverage. It would be similar, I imagine, with the brush, just because you're not pulling away product soaking into the sponge. I wouldn't say it's quite full right off the bat. I'm just gonna put a little more on this side to even it out and one more dot to see if I can build this up to cover the worst of the purple. Just get any excess. The side that started with the sponge application looks a little bit 
more creasy. There's some dry skin there that it is clinging to. I don't think it's creasing. I think that there's dry skin along a crease in my skin and it's clinging to the dry skin, which is accentuating that crease. The side that I did the full application with my fingers looks quite a bit more smooth. I feel like we're getting really nice coverage at this point. I'd say we're pushing full coverage. I can still see some purple coming through, but I am the kind of person that really needs to color correct if I want to fully get rid of that purple cast. And uh, that's too many layers of product under my eyes and it usually looks pretty messy. So I usually don't color correct. We will see if this ends up needing to be set with powder or not. Let's take a look at the time. It is, that was not supposed to happen, I just want the clock, 11.57 a.m. I'm gonna go put the rest of my face on, I'll be right back. Okay, here we are with the Hourglass Concealer. I did not set it with powder. It did seem to set down pretty well on its own. The only issue I'm having is that it's one of those styles of concealer that when it sets down, it sort of freezes in place, and so any of your fine lines like they're visible because they're sort of, the gap between them is frozen in place. You know, it's not the kind that smooths over them and gives you like that elastic sort of barrier that flexes and prevents the visibility of the wrinkle, if that makes any sense. Uh, the There've been a couple lately that do that very well. My beloved Charlotte Tilbury uh, Magic Way Concealer, uh, we've also had a couple of very nice, good reviews. The Pat McGrath Concealer was very nice. It does a bit of that stretchy sort of a thing. The new Age Perfect, the it's L'Oreal, right? The L'Oreal Age Perfect. Uh, that one does a very nice job for smoothing over those lines. This kind of just froze them into place. And you can't really tell, I don't think, well, you can see them a little bit at a distance. That's, that's my only complaint so far. I think the coverage looks nice. I think it's wearing comfortably. We'll see if it dries out my under eye at all by the end of the day, but I will be back. I will be back words. Mm. I will be back tonight and we will see how this one wore. 11.53 p.m. That puts us around the 12 hour mark. Let's take a look at how the hourglass Oh, there it is. I was looking for the words. How the Hourglass Concealer has held up. Uh, you guys, my under eye looks pretty dry. It has settled into my crow's feet, which really only become visible like this when my skin is getting really dehydrated. I feel like it did kind of freeze along my wrinkle lines and that sort of accentuated them. It has accentuated the peely sort of crepey texture underneath this eye especially it's really clinging to the edges of that skin it's just not great I think if you don't have dry skin you might have better luck with this but considering that I'm grading based on dry and maturing skin it's hard to get past those issues so if I had to give a grade to the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. I'm going to just go with a straight up C. I think it looks very nice. I think it has really good coverage. I think it has a nice shade selection. I think if you have dry skin under your eyes, you're going to have trouble with this. Didn't settle into lines, but because my lines and everything is so dry, I just feel like it It just didn't do it any favors. And I need favors. <laughs> I need my concealer to do me favors. So I'm going to say this one is probably a pass. Maybe a get a sample if you can. Get one for free. But probably a pass if you have really dry skin under your eyes. If you don't deal with skin that's as dry as mine, you might be able to get away with this because it's actually really pretty. I just think it's not quite made for dry skin. So there you have it. Another episode of Concealer Fest is in the books. If you enjoy concealer reviews, if you'd like to see more, give me a thumbs up down below so I know to keep on making them. Let me know in the comments what concealers you would like to see next. 
And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. I hope you are all staying well. I appreciate your time, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Thank you.